how are you? So, what I learned was I was on the wrong page with my last um, log on. And so I'm sending out some quick invites so that you all can find me. I found them So there you are. Hi, Nina, Bryn, good to see you. And tonight we're going to sing happy birthday to Owen. And I missed it last night. Owen is in the neighborhood. And so I see the thumbs up. I'm checking with Ethel that she can hear me because last night there were some issues with the sound and so i've been lighting the candle every night at eight o'clock but we're going to light the candle tonight and sing a happy birthday to owen and my sister heather and her husband jay their birthdays today also so we're going to start out tonight with our happy birthday song so everybody join in with me and if you're at home join in and sing i'm going to come all the way down onto the mat and bring my toes up so tonight we're going to sing happy birthday and i'm not going to play the music because facebook um dimmed my sound last night because they said i was using copyrighted material so I have to do a little different version of happy birthday. I can't sing it straight out. So we're going to say happy, 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 happy birthday, Owen, yesterday belated, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, Heather and Jay. And so you all can pretend that you have the candles on your toes. And we're going to take a great big inhale in and blow out the candles on our toes. I made the candle move. Ready? Let's smell the flowers and blow out the candle. Up. I got to bring it over a little closer. Ready? Let's inhale one more time. Take a great big inhale in. Blow out the candle. Now I can do a forward fold and lean into it. So tonight with the kids, I thought that we would do maybe a little bit of a game of I Spy. So I will be putting the Easter eggs out in my window. And this is like the best neighborhood in the world as far as supporting each other. I saw on Facebook that some people are putting teddy bears in their windows for the kids for when they walk by. Um, we did rainbows at the end of the driveway. We did flowers and then people were taking pictures of the rainbows and posting them on Facebook. Awesome, awesome thing. So in yoga i spy so in yoga i spy i'm going to spy the sky i'm going to look up to the sky and then i'm going to reach up to the sky i spy my toes up and i'm going to reach for my toes and i spy yoga for the kids and i'm going to breathe i'm going to take a great big inhale in and I'm going to blow out the candle on my toes again. And then I'm going to inhale. I spy a cloud up in the sky. I spy my heart 
I'm bringing my hands into my heart center. Breath. Now, hmm, I spy an elephant. How do we do an elephant? Do you guys remember the elephant? So we're going to stand up and bring our hands together and make the elephant trunk and swing from side to side. And then we're going to come back to center and inhale, come all the way up. And those of you who know me in the neighborhood know that I have some really big logs out front because I heat my house with a wood stove. So let's do the woodsman again. We're going to put the wood, wood blocks out and let's bend our knees and make our knees soft. And then we're going to take the axe and we're going to bring the arms up overhead. And as we bring the hands down, we're going to make a big loud noise. Ha! Just like the sound of the axe. And we're going to do this 10 times. Ready? So let's inhale up. <clears throat> exhale. Ha! Ha! Gentle, beautiful, smiles. Let's do a great big ohm. So as we do the ohm, let's make our arms go around like the sunshine. Inhale. Oh. And then as the sun goes down, <clears throat> I spy a star who makes a wish on that first star of the night. And then let's bring our arms in together, step our feet in together, and then let's make a half moon as we arch over to the right. Inhale back through center, arch over to the left. Inhaling back through center, Bring our hands back through heart center, all the way down. Come into mountain pose, Tadasana, breath. And let's do a standing eagle tonight. Bring the arms out. Let's do a soaring eagle. And then gently bring one foot behind. And this can be our eagle. Maybe we flex the foot and gently come out and be soaring as we see the eagles fly all over the neighborhood. Bring that right foot down. Exhale. I spy our toes. Inhale. Bring it all the way back up. Come all the way back around. Bring the arms out in a T. Bring the foot back behind. And this may be our soaring eagle. Ethel, hold here. Gently hinge forward. Maybe breathing into it. Feeling the breath. And inhale, bring that foot back, bring our hands back to heart center, and come back and sit down in our chair. And breathe. Now from our chair, my son, Michael, his favorite Greek mythology was about Zeus throwing lightning bolts around in. So come up on your tippy toes around heaven and the earth and come into lightning bolt. Tender knees, keep your feet on the mat. Exhale, bring the arms back in. Gently one more forward fold. Inhale, bring it all the way back up. Feel a gentle back bend. I spy the sky. Exhale, 
well, bring ourselves back down. Adults, bring yourself onto the mat gently. Kids, maybe you cross one leg. Ready? And bring ourselves all the way down onto the mat. Maybe you have a blanket, a cushion, a block that you choose to sit on in meditation. And tonight is night 20 of my yoga practices. And I'm shifting into adults a little bit early, but kids, you can listen to this too. That what we do in life, okay, what we think about becomes our actions. Our actions are what we do repeatedly. And so what we do repeatedly becomes who we are. And so we can choose actions of helpfulness, understanding, respect, or we can choose other things. And you can have fun doing healthy, respectful, understanding things and loving, tender things. So with that, and so then if we do things for the higher good, helping people, opening doors for people, saying hello, waving at people. Those are all practices of excellence. And so excellence is a habit. And there's a saying, it takes 21 days to make a habit and 21 days to break a habit. So tomorrow night at 7.30 is going to be 21 days of yoga every day. And for those of you who know me, I've been doing at least one yoga class a day for the past two years. Teaching, practicing on my own, um, at least one class a day. So through this time of social distancing, I decided to continue that practice of excellence and teach a class of yoga every night. And my number one thing is connecting with my grandchildren and doing something fun with them. And I know that their attention span for yoga is about 10 minutes. And, you know, maybe they stick around a little bit longer. Anyway, <clears throat> So this morning, I was going through the books, as many of you have heard me say in many classes, and today I was looking at seated poses. And most of the classes that I teach are in gyms or fitness centers, and so the practices are pretty moving and grooving. Um, with a couple exceptions, I do a chair gentle fusion, but that's still a pretty, pretty tough class because we do um, standing poses and chair poses. And so for tonight, I decided that we're going to have some fun, but I wanted to put together a seated mat practice. And we will do a couple sun salutations, modified ones maybe in there. But I wanted to do a series of seven seated poses that I looked at earlier that all create the mental benefits of calming and worded a little bit differently in the books, but I'm just going to say they're all calming poses. And so evening practices to me, um, calming practices. So easy cross leg. 
Bring our feet in front. Gently let our knees come from side to side. And maybe you choose to sit on a cushion. Maybe you choose to bring yourself back down to the mat. An easy cross leg. You can have one leg in front of the other or put one leg on top of the other. But the idea is so the blood flow in the legs goes fairly evenly. And this is a seated pose for meditation. A little later in the practice, we may work into a lotus pose or a half lotus pose. And in this meditation pose, we're going to bring the forefinger to the thumb and the forefinger to the thumb and calming mudra. Now you can bring your fingers around your knees and gently let your encircled fingers rest on the knees. Now focusing on the breath, take a great big inhale in. Audible sigh out. Now inhale, halfway through the exhale, close the mouth. Create that ocean hushing sound. So take a great big inhale in. And hearing that ocean hushing sound in the back of the throat. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And just taking a moment to hear the breath. In our ears. And maybe at home you choose to turn on some gentle music. Maybe it's okay to have quiet in the background. Now coming back to center bringing the left palm up and the right palm underneath. Bring the thumbs together, the elbows out to the side. Bring the ears up to the shoulders. Bring the ears down. Gently look down at the palms. Mudra of introspection. Gently, as we look up, bring the right hand up next to our side. Mudra for releasing fear. We keep our discernment and let go of our fear. We make clearer decisions when they're based on fact and not emotions. Gently bring our hands to one side, coming over to the right. Maybe you're at the left. Honor that in your twist. Bringing ourselves back to center, bringing the hands back to center, gently twisting the opposite direction.
bringing our head back to center, bringing our hands back to center. Gently bring our knees up, take out our cushion, our pillow, whatever it is that we may have been sitting on. Gently bring our feet wide, coming out in a V. Wide leg seated pose. Bring the toes up to the ceiling. Bring our hands to our knees and make our knees get soft. Maybe we can move the kneecaps when the knees are soft. Back and forth and gently move the knees from side to side. Now, if your knees are tender, be very gentle in moving the kneecaps. Be mindful, honor yourself. in that space and so i'm not clear why can you hear me now am i speaking loud enough is that louder can somebody give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down i'm not sure let me just take a check here because i'm being told that the sound is not coming out and so okay you can hear me when i'm coming up all right so the thing that i've noticed is when you play the video um in the front corner right hand corner of the screen there's a little volume on the live videos, and so you have to turn that up individually on the side. So, all right, coming back, wide leg, forward fold. And legs, toes are up, knees are soft, now re-engage the knees and gently hinge forward. Now, hinging forward in this forward fold, maybe it's a tiny, tiny eighth of an inch. Remember, honor the feel-good edge. It's your practice, so make it feel good. Maybe the palms come down. Maybe you can stretch the arms out in front and feel this gentle forward fold so forward folding is calming breathing into it benefits here the middle organs the liver the kidneys the intestines are getting improved blood flow stretching out the back Finding your edge. Some people will even take a block or a book in front if that feels better. Now, come over to the right. Bring that right arm up against the leg and gently bring the elbow back behind. Toes come up to the ceiling. And this may be the edge right where you are. Maybe that right arm comes up and over and we're looking up at the ceiling, breathing into it. Maybe your neck says, no, I'm going to look down at my knee. Honor what your neck is telling you. Inhale, come all the way back up. Bring that left arm to the inside, toes come up to the ceiling. Stretch open that arm, breathing into it. 
Now gently bring that left arm up and over, looking up towards the ceiling. Maybe your neck says, uh-uh, I'm looking down at my knee. Honor that. Honor your edge, the feel-good edge. Breathe into it. Inhale, come all the way back up. Now, take the left leg in. I'm mirroring you, so... And we're going to turn our body towards the right leg. So this is our um, Jani Shirshasana. We've been doing this at night. Bring our stomach towards the thigh. This is not the first time that I've done most of these poses. It is the first time that I've put together a practice of predominantly seated poses. Breathing into it. Maybe you take your left hand to the outside of that right foot, making a gentle twist here. Take that left hand, bring it back behind, bringing ourselves deeper into the twist. Gently inhale, bringing this all the way up and around and coming into the twist in the opposite direction. Bringing the left foot over to the side. Gently push up. Maybe you come up into a side plank. Maybe you hold in the twist on the mat. If your knees are tender, honor in the the twist. Exhale, come on back down to the mat. Bring the left leg out, bring the right leg in. Adjust our sit bones, gently twist to look at the right leg. Bring the stomach to the right thigh. Gently walking ourselves down onto the mat. Take that left hand and bring it to the outside, right hand to the outside of the left foot. Bring that right hand back behind. Breathing into it. Inhale, coming back up. Bring the left hand to the right hand to the base of the spine. This is why I don't like to do mirror image. Bring the toes over. Bring the arm up and over. Gently come up. Gentle side body stretch. Option to keep your hip on the ground as you breathe into it. Gently bring ourselves back down to the mat. Bringing ourselves back to center. Now, we did wide leg. We did Jani Shirshasana. Bringing the soles of the feet in together. Bring our hands back behind. Lift our tailbone up, tuck the tailbone under, coming into our cobbler pose. Maybe the pinky toes come together and we can gently open the soles of the feet. Breathing into it.
Now, bringing our knees up together, walk the feet in, give ourselves a hug, bring our nose to our knees, Inhale, bring ourselves up. Bring our hands back behind. Bring the feet straight out in front. Maybe you bring a block to either side. Maybe you use a big book. And gently from here, pick up the sit bones. Now pick up one foot. Pick up the other foot. Maybe you can pick up both feet. I'm still doing one at a time. Come on back down. Bend the knees. Bring the feet wide. Let the knees come in together. Gently bring the knees over to one side as we look to the other side. So the knees are coming over to the left. Maybe you pick that left foot up and come deeper into the stretch. Maybe you sit yourself up tall and bring the foot into the crease by the hip and come deeper into the twist. Maybe you have your feet still on the mat. Gently bring the feet back together, lift up the tailbone, bring it back down, let the knees come together and reset. Now gently bring the knees over to the other side and we're looking into the twist. Maybe you pick up the right foot and put it onto the left knee. Maybe that left foot, right foot comes all the way back to the hip, looking back over the shoulder, breathing into it. Remembering to honor your edge and whatever we do on one side, then we do on the other. And coming back to center, releasing that foot out, bringing the knees back up to the ceiling, bring our feet straight in front of us. Take the block between our shins, bring our fingertips back towards our body. Inhale, maybe we come up into a reverse tabletop. Maybe you hold in the mat. Breathing into it. Exhale, bring ourselves back down to the mat. Take the block back out. Now, one more time, bring the feet back around and maybe we take our block and come into seated. And so maybe we're sitting on the blocks so that there is no pressure on the knees and gently in this seated position, Hero pose, gently hold right here. Now, maybe you can take the blocks out, bring the toes together 
and the knees wide. So we're setting up for seated lion's pose. Now in seated lion's pose, you can keep the knees together like we were sitting on the blocks. And so let's bring our knees back together. Let's do this seated lion's pose. Bring our hands up and roar. <sighs> and this is so good for the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth. It brings oxygen to the brain. Okay, so now we're going to bring the knees wide, different variation of seated lion's pose. And bring our hands, our claws into the mat like we're getting ready to pounce like a cat. And again, take that great big inhale in and audible roar out. Roar. <sighs> now, one more variation on the hands for our third roar. Take our hands, our palms, and gently bring our fingers back towards the body. So we're getting a shoulder stretch here. Feel the shoulders come back to the spine. And again, gently feel this great big lion's breath roar. Two, three, roar. <sighs> Bring our hands down. Come down wide like child's pose. Breathing into it. Walk our hands back up. Now, bring the left leg out in front. And maybe you take that block under your cheek. And so you're seated on the block, gently bringing the right leg out and just sitting in this position. Breathing into it. Leg is extended. Maybe you can take the block out and the sit bones come down onto the mat. And maybe you can take your toe and pick that leg up for herring. Maybe you hold both feet hands around Maybe you're holding behind the leg. Shoulders are straight and tall. Big hip extension. Now bring that left foot back down. Gently hinge forward. And maybe both arms come forward. Maybe you're supporting yourself on both sides. Maybe you're still sitting up on that block. Inhale, coming back up, bringing the right leg around in front. Gently windshield wiper the feet from side to side. Opening the hips, come back to center. Gently give your knees a little massage here. Now coming back. Bring that left foot back behind. Maybe you bring yourself up onto the block. Maybe that left foot tucks back behind. Our sit bones are in the mat. Grab our big toe. Inhale and come on up into herring. Maybe we're holding the back of the leg. Maybe you have your arms around 
the foot together. One hand, two hands, all different variations. Remember, it's about finding the feel-good edge. Exhale, bring that leg back to the mat. Come forward, breathing into it. Inhale, come all the way up. Bring the left leg back around in front. Take our blocks. Maybe our hands come into the mat and we pick ourselves up. One foot up, the other foot up. Come on back down. Maybe you use the blocks or your hands in the mat. Do the pick me up. Opposite foot up, opposite foot up. Tuck the tailbone under. Maybe both feet come up, breathing into it. Now, taking the right foot to the top of the left thigh and gently feeling this stretch, bring the left toes up, sitting straight up. And this may be right where we hold in seated pigeon. Maybe we can bend that left leg and bring the heel to the gluteus and then wrap our arms around that right leg. Now I'm showing you this side first because it's not quite perfect. And that's okay. We're all still good people, even though our practice may not be perfect. Breathing into it. Gently straighten the legs out. Up. Feel a little boat. Feel a little boat. Bring the legs in, out in, out, bring them back out in front. Let the legs windshield wiper side to side. Bring the shoulders up, bring the shoulders down. Shoulders up, shoulders down. Bring the opposite leg in. Ankle is on the thigh. And this may be right where you are. Maybe you bend the right knee and you bring your sit bones in and wrap the arms around and come into a seated pigeon. Breathing into it. Again, straighten that right leg out. Bring the left leg over. Bring the left arm up and around. Toes come up to the ceiling and feel the twist. Come on back to center. Bring the left leg out. Cross the right leg over. Bring that arm up and around. Looking back over the right shoulder. Breathing into it.
coming back to center. This time, bring the right leg out, cross the left leg over. Maybe that right leg comes back behind. And again, we hug the left leg as long as the sit bones are both in the mat, looking back over the shoulder, breathing into it. Now coming back through center. And I said we're going to stay on the mat tonight. Well, a little bit. So uncross and recross. So the left leg is back, the right leg is on top, and we're gently coming into the twist, breathing into it. Twists are so good for the spine, the muscles in the middle of the abdomen, the liver, the kidneys. Come on back to center. Remember to drink your water after your practice. Now, we're going to stack our knees. So ideally, the pinky side of both toes come to the mat. Pinky toes of both feet come to the mat. Stacking the knees so we're in seated cow face. And maybe if this is too intense for your knees, you come in, or your hips, you come into half cow face legs. Now, the leg that's on top the opposite arm comes up because we may not all be on the same side. So gently bend the elbow of the opposite side and gently bring that back, breathing into it. Maybe the opposite arm comes around the back and they reach together. Maybe you're grabbing your shirt Maybe you have a strap, a belt, a kitchen towel, whatever works to make that connection between your hands. Now, gently hinge forward, breathing into it. Inhale, come all the way back up. Release the arms, release the legs. One more time, shake them out, shake out the head, shake out the shoulders, shake out the arms. Let everything come loose. Come back to center. Bring the opposite leg over top so that the pinky side of pinky toe side of the foot is in the mat and the knees are stacked. Maybe you stack the knees and you come into seated cow legs. Maybe that bottom leg straight out in front. Opposite arm from the leg on top bends back. Maybe we reach back behind. So seated cow face pose. Gently hinge forward, breathing into it.
Inhale, coming all the way back up. Releasing the arms back out. Releasing the legs out. Gently grab our toes and bring ourselves into chalice. Maybe you're holding the back of your thighs. Gentle, seated, balancing pose. Bringing the toes and the feet together. Feel our candlestick. And yes, it's time to light the candlestick. It's 8 o'clock somewhere, showing the love in the neighborhood. My windows have electric candlesticks in them all year round. Gently release out. Feel the boat. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring the knees back in. Give ourselves a hug. Feet are lined up, seated child's pose. Come into a ball, bring our nose to our knees. Inhale, bringing it up. Gently come back to center, bringing the legs out in front. Gently windshield wiper. Now, this is what I call rocking the baby. That's not the name of it officially, but it was a translation. Take the foot of one leg and we're going to start gently opening the hips. And as we're holding the foot and we're making circles with the hips and the shoulders, kind of like we're stirring the pot, and then bring it back around the other way with our foot. So we're opening the hip, we're opening the shoulder, and I'm holding the foot with the opposite arm from the foot and making this circle. Now, I'm going to take this foot and put it into the crook of the opposite arm and gently, as I look at my knee, it reminds me of rocking the babies when they were little. As we come into this and maybe you're holding with your foot out here, that's okay. Made me think of another pose. Let's do an archer. So take the same arm, bring that knee back to the shoulder, and then gently bring the opposite arm forward and come into archer's pose. Breathing into it. Bring that foot back down on the mat. Bring the opposite leg in. Hold it with the opposite foot. Gentle circles with the arm, the foot, gently making circles one way. Bring it back around. Make gentle circles back around the other way. Breathing through it. Now, Maybe this foot comes in the crook of the opposite arm. Maybe not quite. Honor that. So hold the foot in the hand instead of the crook of the arm. And gently rock the baby. Breathing into it. Bringing our fingers around the toe, bring that knee up to our shoulder. And this may be right where you hold. Bring that opposite arm up and reach towards the toe. Seated archer's bow. Now, let that foot come back out on the mat. One more time. Do the yoga pick-me-up 
release out the hips side to side. Maybe you pick up one foot, then the other. Pick up the opposite foot, then the other. Come on back down. So we're still getting our arm work out here. Just because we're seated, bring the shoulders up and around, up and around, up and around, up and around. Now, let's come into elephant. We've been doing a standing elephant with the kids. This is seated elephant. So we're going to take, I'm starting on my left side because this is the good side so I can demo for you. And we're going to take that left foot up and bring that knee maybe up and over the shoulder. And then bring the hands to the mat or the block, tuck the tailbone under and pick up that leg and come up into elephant. And I'm going to hold an elephant and not kick the legs out to the side because I'm out of practice with that. <clears throat> but we'll work up to it. We're going to start bringing some more seated poses back into the practice. Now, bring the opposite leg up. Bring the arm underneath. Again, bring the arms into Chaturanga arms. And this may be where you hold. Maybe you tuck the tailbone under and pick that leg up off the mat. And maybe not so much. Come on back. Shake the hands out. Shake the hands out. Shake the hands out. Come back to center. Open the book. Bring the hands around. Open and around. Open and around. Open and around. Open to the world, back around, open to the world, back around, spine is tall, open the book to the world, bring it back around. Now, pose that we've been working up to, lotus, full lotus, so half lotus, we're going to take a foot and bring it in to the hip crease and this is our half lotus and we're just going to hold here and breathe into it and maybe you take the opposite arm around and reach towards that foot bend the elbow as you hold it and breathe so we're working our way into lotus this is a version of a half lotus bind a shtanga tree seated on the mat and you know the translations of all of the names vary breath now release that leg and bring it back out on the mat bring the opposite leg into the hip crease Bring that hand back around. Maybe you can grab your toes. Maybe you're grabbing your elbow. If you can grab your toes, maybe you gently hinge forward. If you didn't hinge forward on the other side, then don't hinge forward on this side. Hold in this seated position, breathing into it. as a half lotus. Now from here, release the hands out, bring the arms out, bring them up over, release them out and around. Maybe you can bring the other foot on top and come into a full lotus. And I know some people who can do this very quickly take the block, I'm not so quick, and maybe pick up and come up and bring your knees and elevate off the mat. Maybe. Bring the feet out gently. Rock the feet from side to side, side to side, side to side. 
and point and flex the toes, gentle circles. Now, bringing our hands to either side, bring the shoulders up to the ears, seated staff pose, seated mountain pose, bringing our hands to either side, flexing, shoulders back and down, toes come up to the ceiling. Now engage every muscle in the body. Make it tight, the toes, the legs, the calves, the abdomen, the wrists are flexed but not touching the mat. Shoulders back and down, bring the chin to chest, breathing into it. 10 deep breaths here. Everything engaged. Great big audible sigh. <sighs> Feel everything melt. Bringing our hands back behind. And gently roll down onto the mat, bringing the palms up. And again, releasing into Savasana. I'm putting some gentle music on through Savasana. Starting at our toes. Maybe you gently wiggle the toes. And then feel them come completely at ease into the mat. Feel the feet become gently at ease coming into the mat. Ankles come completely at ease into the mat. Shins both right and left, we're working our way up the body, come completely at ease into the mat. Become aware of our knees, our kneecaps, the back of the knees. Allow them to melt into the mat. Our thighs both sides, right and left, melting into the mat. Our hip bones, melting into the mat. Our tailbone, our root chakra, which is at the base of the tailbone, spinning just as it should for you. The root chakra's color is red. Coming up into the sacral spine. Sacral chakra is orange. Spinning just as it should for you. 
Feeling the muscles in the hips come at ease. Coming into the lumbar spine. Our stomach. Solar plexus chakra is sunshine yellow. Feel the muscles melting into the mat and the solar plexus chakra is spinning just as it should for you. Moving up into the thoracic spine, the heart, the lungs, the chest, the shoulder blades, the heart chakra, spring green grass, color spinning just as it should for you. Moving down the shoulders, feeling our upper arms melt into the mat. This deep sense of ease and muscles at ease extending to the elbows, the forearms, our wrists, our palms and our fingers melting into the mat. Cervical spine, our thyroid, our throat, our throat chakra. Azure sky blue is the color of the throat chakra to activate it spinning just as it should for you. Coming all the way up to the back of the head, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth, our tongue come completely at ease. Becoming aware of our third eye, in the middle of our forehead as if you turn both of your eyes in to look together inside your head is the place of your third eye. This is a violet or a magenta spinning just as it should for you. Your scalp and your hair come at ease. And just above the top of the scalp is the crown chakra. I envision the colors of the crown chakra like a 4th of July sparkler. And spinning just as it should for you. I'm gently beaming Reiki energy out. You can ask the energy to pass you over, or you can ask for it to come to you. Gently taking a great big inhale in. 
Becoming aware of the breath. Turning our head so that our chin goes to the right. And then comes back through center to the left. And then the chin comes back through center to the right. And back through center to the left. Bringing our head back to neutral. Gently wiggle our fingers and toes. Straightening our arms up overhead. Bringing our knees into our chest, giving ourselves a hug. Gently rolling over onto the right side. Pausing and thanking ourselves for our practice. Gently pushing ourselves up one vertebrae at a time. Coming back into our easy cross leg position. Maybe you get a cushion to sit on. Maybe after this practice, your legs are stretched to sit comfortably as you are. And gently coming into heart mudra, bring the pointer finger under the thumb and then the next two fingers on top and gently rest and feel this energy bring life force into our body. Bringing our hands into heart mudra. Thank you for practicing with me tonight. As the light within me salutes the light within you. When we are both at this place, we are all the same. Namaste. There's a worldwide meditation, I believe, at 1045 tonight, Eastern time, and then one tomorrow at 12 noon, Eastern time. Be happy, safe, and healthy until we meet again. I want to check in with everybody who came out to practice tonight, and thank you for being here. And thank you for your input and your commitment to yoga excellence. Nancy, Cindy, Bryn, Scott, Nina, Okay, let me come back here. Much love, Ethel, I know you're here. Trying to scan through. Because once I click off, then I can't see who was here. So wanting to check in with everybody.
Wow, Linda, Debbie, Lou, Cheryl, Beth, Susan, Lynn, Linda, Elliot, Rose, good to see you. Ethel, I can't see who signed on in front of you. Oh, Nina, Nina, good to see you. Okay, let's bring it all the way down. June, Jeannie Whitecraft, good to see you. Thank you, Nina. Nanette, I'll do full out on Monday. I'm gonna stick with a gentle flow tomorrow. Tonight was not easy. It just wasn't a bunch of um, sun salutations. Auntie, good to see you. Seema, thank you. Marion, good to see you. Thank you, everyone, again. Anne-Marie, thank you.